we're going to talk about the basic principles that a lot of engineers don't talk about and I bet a lot of guys who are designing stuff don't understand. It's called the arc radius principle. It's very seldom talked about in engineering books and we're going to break it down real simple and everything on your suspension, everything works off of this. Oh my gosh! Okay, I hope you're close enough to see this. You have seen all these drawings like this, where they draw lines, imaginary lines, going from this spot to that spot, and you're thinking, that's pretty cool, but what does it all mean? And a lot of the guys who show you this, they don't know what it means. They're just working off what they learned from somebody else, but I'm gonna tell you a little thing that I found way back when, and I learned it from, of all the craziest things in the world, I was an actual, I was an RC car driver. I was sponsored by a company. I raced these little cars. And at 17 years old, they were teaching me these little principles that I had no clue. I just thought, yeah, this is cool. I'm playing with cars, I'm playing with toy cars. So you've seen these lines and everybody draws them, right? And all your suspension is based off of this, but it's called an arc radius. So what do they mean by that? Well, you see the line that goes here. They say, oh, it's imaginary center. And this is a line that goes here. What they're saying is this, that is the dead center of an arc. Well, these arms, the way they're bent, all flow on that same arc and radius. Isn't that crazy? Okay, that's cool. And then, if you add a steering arm, it has to fall in that same area. So it has to swivel from here and it has to end there. And then there's, it goes a step further. This is, so it goes in X position and it goes in Y position. And what I mean, it goes up and it goes down. Look at this. Do you see this upper arm and lower arm? You ever notice that your lower arms in your car are really long, right? And the upper arms are short. Guess what they've done? That pivot point in this pivot point, they meet also an imaginary center. And when you're building your steering, your steering knuckle that has to go from here to here, it also has to be within this range. So it has to be from here to here. If it's outside of that, the bend is wrong. <laughs> so there's the center of that one. So this circle goes this way. That's cool, right? And it goes a step further. Let me show you something. So we did a little drawing real quick so you can see the side of the car. And on the side of the car is the same arc radius principle. How that works. Your front control arms always have a tilt down, right? So they, they go to a center and your lower arm's flat and then it has its pivot point. And that's the center that these two arms roll around in, okay? And then you got the back. So you put a four link in, your upper bars are angled down, okay? And your lower bar is straight. Where these two cross right here, this is now called the instant center. And the back end works the same way. This is why if you lower the bars or raise this lower bar, you create more traction because you move this instant center either up or down. And this one has, sorry, this one also has an instant center. Man, we're getting messy. But that creates your instant center of the car. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? It, and and it goes it goes different. It goes this way. Look at look at this one. There's your steering arms. Steering arm. There's your rear. So your rear is your pivot point for your car. And your steering arms need to intersect. There's your line. And there's your line. So your steering arms need to intersect here. That's why on Chevelle's, the steering arm goes this way, right? Because it actually goes, sorry, it actually goes into the wheel a little bit because it's got to tie into that front. So Chevelle's steering arm goes this way, Camaro's steering arm goes this way. 
And that's why a lot of our arms do the way they do. Some of them go straight because they're getting this, this setup. There's your instant center. All this works also in an arc radius. And what do I mean by that? Because this controls your Ackerman and how much you turn. And when you're turning, here's your main pivot point. Your tires change direction, right? Like this. There's your pivot point here. There. So the more Ackerman you have, the tighter the car turns because you've decreased this, this turning circle, right? There's an actual word finally showed up. Your turning radius. And there's your center for that one. So it's huge, but there it is. And you want to see it as in real world, oh man, this, it just gets better. Hold on, let me show you something else on the other one. So now we knew where instant center was, right? If you add the tire in there to go to that same pivot, right? Here's your tire going this way. And then this tire going this way to its, to its center. We'll put that center and put that center there. And right where they cross, that is your roll center. So now you know, this is your roll center. There's your instant center. Is this crazy? I know I made a big mess, right? Wait, so well, let's go look at it on a car. So we saw all that crazy drawing, started getting crazy on the board. And you saw how their arc radius works. You don't find it in a lot of engineering books. In fact, I've looked through bunches of them. Uh, and definitely you don't find them in any of those little inexpensive pamphlets you buy that are 300 pages long, like from Herb Adams and the rest of these guys about the arc radius. So in the real world, I don't know if you can see it. You see what I did? I put strings on the car so you can kind of see how it works from real world. So back there, an almost in perfect line is my is the ride tech upper link. Can you see that? And then the lower string for there. Then we did the same thing on the front. The front, your upper arms tilt down on the back. You ever wonder why? You know, that's why. That angle is your anti-dive, and it has a little area that it matches towards the back. Cool, right? So when you have anti-dive here and you have anti-squat there and they get together, you create your instant center for your car from front to back. Oh man, this is why, this is what, this is, this is why when I'm talking to guys about suspension or I'm talking to you about suspension, I always ask you, what do you have for the front? What do you have on the back? B because I'm looking at this as a whole car. Because if you have the wrong component here and you don't have enough of a component up here, your instant center of your car is gonna be in a different location. It'll handle different. It'll take a different spring rate. It'll work differently. So, so how cool is that? So now we see that the instant center on a four-linked Camaro roughly is about there on the door. So what if you have a different suspension? Let's go look. Let's go look at my car and see some subtle changes we did here. Now this is a torque arm suspension that I've done. Do you see where my instant center is in the car? Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. So on a torque arm, my lower bar's the same as on the other car. Now my upper bar, I don't have an upper bar, so it works off the upper pivot on the back of the torque arm. And the instant center on the torque arm is literally where it mounts to the chassis. So the shorter your arm, the shorter it goes back. The longer the arm, the further up it goes. And then, to do, to do one more thing to the car, I do um, gold strand mods, oh, on a Camaro at least anyways, Shelby mods on a, on a Mustang. So we move the arm, upper arm down and give it a slight more tilt. So there's the line on my car. Do you see where my line is? So what happens is, even though this Camaro and this Camaro 
are roughly the same in weight, you know, 68, 69. They're all in the same basic chassis. Mine's going to handle differently because I'm, I've moved my instant center to here. So my car now, my car now will rotate around a corner from that position of the car. If I'm cornering, I pull around a corner, that's where it comes from. If you're autocrossing your four link car, it's happening there. So more about, well, actually pretty close to where you're sitting. So as you're autocrossing, if your suspension is done right, um, you should be able to pivot your car at this spot. Isn't that cool? So your arc, there's your pivot point starts there on a four link. My arc starts there on my car, my torque arm car. Not every torque arm car is gonna be this way. Mine has been done differently. I got a lower bar in the back. My pivot points changed. I've got a gold strand. Well, it's not even a gold strand mod. It's a whole, it's a slightly modified gold strand mod on the front. My pivot point starts there. My corner starts before my butt. It starts up by my feet. So the car is actually rotating about two feet closer than another car. That makes sense? Man. All right. Let's go back to the board. We'll talk about some other stuff. Now we talked about all these different suspensions, so we're gonna look at something here. And, okay. So we're gonna start with the, what they call, what do they call that? I think it's called a Hotchkiss Drive. So basically a leaf spring, okay? Leaf spring, and how this affects different parts of, it, this even affects your braking. Because the leaf spring, leaf spring, and the tire create um, a short range right here and the top of the tire, basically. So you got this big gap right here for a wheel hop because it's so short. So leaf spring cars, you often see, uh, you often see brake hop when you hit the brakes and back of the car does this. A lot of that goes away when you go to a link suspension, even though the bottom link, say, is the same length, right? And we got our wheel here, but what happens is you have an upper link. So it's no longer using the top of the tire as its pivot point, it's down lower. So it knows this. So now your brake hop section, see, is so much smaller, smaller. Isn't that kind of cool? And that's usually, you know, that, and you get your little ears coming up for your axle. And then it goes even further. So now you have less, now you have less, ooh, not wheel hop. We, now you have less brake. Hop, brake hop. And then you go, let's say you do your torque arm setup, right? And like we talked about, a torque arm usually goes off the top of the pumpkin. So if you have your pumpkin here, you don't have ears up here for, for your torque arm. So it goes off the top of the pumpkin. So now it's even down lower. So now you have this little bitty setup, right? So now you even have less brake hop. But this is, <laughs> when you're thinking, this is amazing. But what happens is, because there's less brake hop, there's also a little bit less grip. So now you have to increase the size of your rear brakes, or you'll start overpowering the front brakes because you've taken away the balance, this, this part, and you moved it to here, and you're pretty good. And then you've gone to here, and now you're using the same brakes. But the reaction of that brake is different because the input or the leverage, because remember all this works on a pivot. There's your pivot right there. This is your circle, pivot right here. And, and, and there's your short, shorter circle, pivot right here. So this longer circle in your center, sorry, creates more leverage. So it makes that brake work harder. So you actually have less brake and you start overdoing your front. Oh man. You know, I can't sit here None of this can be done in a 20 minute video, but I'm gonna start chipping away at little things like this. And you know, you can go Google it up, arc radius principle. You're gonna see um, very few books, very few books talk about it or at all. Um, it's one of those engineering principles that just, just get passed over. Matter of fact, um, 20 years ago, they didn't even call it a principle. I think they called it an arc, race, arc radius theory. But you know, it, 
then in the 70s came along, the 80s, and they started all the geom uh, not geometry, but the suspension designs kept changing, and this is what they come to. Anyways, it's cool, right? Um, thank you, thank you for watching the video. Please click the button, subscribe, share this with friends. I'll try and give a little bit of information. And I really don't try to, there's 10,000 guys out there that'll throw all the jargon at you because they're reading it out of a book on a script or teleprompter. And you can look around here. I got none of that. There's nothing here. It's just me. I'm standing in front of a camera and a whiteboard. And I'm just giving you the basics that I use. Okay. Thanks again for watching. This is awesome. Suspension Geek here at Geek House Racing. Uh, I've got more cars to work on and... See you next week.